I've done around 150 fantasy football drafts already this summer between best ball drafts on underdog, mock drafts on ESPN and Yahoo, you know, the Scott Fishbowl, even like the Yahoo Pro Leagues have opened up now. And I like to drop a pretty penny on them every now and then and compete against the general casuals out there. All right. But with that type of experience, you start to understand the entire industry. You start to understand the trends. So in this video, I am going to give y'all what I think is the perfect, the optimal draft strategy for fantasy football this year if you've got an early round pick. So we're talking 101 through the 104. And don't worry if you've got a middle or a late round pick, I will be doing those videos as well. So we're going to run through round by round all the way through 10, 11 rounds and put together a potential team and then give you a few alternative options along the way. But we're going to go through every single round and where I think you should be taking advantages of tiers and pockets of positions and things like that. Everything in this video is going to be based off of Sleeper. All right, their full PPR ADP. I will link that down below. It is free to, go to look at it on their Google Sheets. You might watch this video a little bit later in the summer, so maybe the ADP has updated. I know people are going to complain about ADP no matter where I take it from. If I use it from underdog, the wide receivers get pushed up too much. If it's from ESPN or Yahoo, the running backs get pushed up too much, and it's too casual, etc. So I thought Sleeper was a pretty good middle ground to, to really hone in on where the industry actually is. All right. So some general rule of thumbs, I think when just drafting, but uh, especially from the 101 to 104, I know everyone's always like, don't only lock in on specific positions or players when you're drafting. You got to be water. B, be water is like the most overused phrase in the history of fantasy football. It's like, yeah, fucking if Bijan falls to the 207, sure, I'm going to take him. But otherwise, the reason I do all these drafts in preparation is to make sure that I understand where most players are going to be available when draft day comes so that I can put together a strategy beforehand. So a rule of thumb, when I leave the third round, right, we're three rounds into a draft this year, one quarterback leagues, I want to have two wide receivers and one running back on my roster. And pivoting off that, I am fine having my first bench wide receiver before I have my second running back. So if you start three wide receivers, right, your starting lineup, whatever your platform, whatever your friends play in, if you start with three wide receivers, I'm okay taking my fourth wide receiver before I have my second running back, all right? So that goes as long as your wide receivers continue to go up. And that applies for bench spots as well. Uh, also, another rule of thumb quickly is just like, this is not the year to attempt late round tight end. Once you get past like tight end 11, 12, it gets ugly quick. But let's start in round one here, 101 through 104. Uh, very hard to go wrong with this pick early, all right? Either direction works given the flexibility and just the quality of players at the top of round one. You can go with Christian McCaffrey if you have the 101, if you want to go in the running back direction. If not, I think you should just anchor your team with a high-end wide receiver. Uh, CD Lamb, Tyree Kill, Amon Ra, Jamar Chase. CD Lamb, 102, we'll, we'll take him, for example. The round two, three turn. If you went Christian McCaffrey with your first pick, you'd be very well off double-tapping wide receiver here because the options available, you have... Ayuk at the 2-9, you have Nico at the 3-4, Mike Evans at the 3-5, Debo at the 3-8. So you can grab any of those two wide receivers. If you went with a high-end wideout like we did with CeeDee Lamb, this is a good time, I think, to split the difference because I still think there are really, really quality options here. If a Kyron Williams were to follow you, that would be the guy I'm targeting. Otherwise, I'm trying to split the difference here. So I might take a guy like Nico Collins at the 211 and then Isaiah Pacheco at the 302. Pacheco is going at the 309 right now so that again is a realistic comp. So we're going to start off the first three rounds. So we'll go CD with our high and wide receiver. At the turn we'll go Nico and Isaiah Pacheco. Now we move on to the round four five turn right. So we got round one high end wide receiver round two three turn and whenever I reference turn it just means like the you know the end of round right there and since we're picking at the beginning of the draft then we do pick at the turn there necessarily so you have to kind of just get your guys and you have to go in with a little bit of a strategy because you know you have to wait another 24 picks before you're back on the clock again so when we go to the round four five turn I've been very vocal about wanting to anchor my tight end position with someone in the big five right it's McBride or Laporta or Kelsey or Andrews or Dalton Kincaid. And this would be the time to do so because they will not fall further than round five. You've got to do your best here to read the room in regards to whether or not you have to pick the tight end in round four or round five. For instance, if you have like the 409 and then you're not on the clock again until like the 5-4, but there's only one of the big five tight ends left, you're going to want to take them there. But if not, if none of them have gone off the board yet and your league just historically does not take tight ends very early, then maybe you take you know a better player at a different position earlier and then hit the tight end afterwards. 
And because up to this point, you've kind of split the difference in your lineup, right? You've got one running back that's anchoring your team. You've got two really solid wide receivers that are in that position. You have a little bit of flexibility. You didn't go like super running back heavy, so you have to go wide receiver. You didn't go super wide receiver heavy so that you you feel like you have to go running back here. So what I'm going to do here, based on the ADP, uh, McBride is going 407. Mark Andrews is the 412. Dalton Kincaid is the 51. Devonta Smith is the 4-9. Uh, I've got some other options on the board that Tony will put up on the screen. But I'm going to go with uh, Dalton Kincaid and Devonta Smith. Now, Devonta Smith is a back end of the fourth round pick. So he's like the 4-10 right now per sleeper ADP. And then Kincaid's an early fifth round pick. So we will go with Devonta Smith and Dalton Kincaid on the turn there. So we move along to the round six or seven turn. And before we get into that, by the way, if you are drafting in a two quarterback or a super flex league, I have this exact same long-winded article version of this in our draft guide right now. Uh, I don't know if I'll be making videos for them. You'll get the one quarterback videos for picks one through four, five through eight, and then nine through 12. But in terms of super flex content, those will be in the draft guide, which is available right now. It actually went live today, I believe, if you're watching this. The cheapest way to get it is by going to underdogfantasy.com or downloading the Underdog Fantasy app using promo code BDGE on there. And I promise that the best part about Underdog, not only like when you deposit and use our code, you get the draft guide for free, but you could use the funds that you deposit on there to draft in their best ball drafts. And it is the single best way to prepare. Like, yes, I understand that wide receivers get pushed up heavy and it's not exactly the same as your home leagues, but from a player trend standpoint, you're getting to see like the actual players movement throughout the summer when training camp things happen, when depth chart things happen, when preseason games happen and players move based on like people really paying attention to football. The best ball drafts on underdog are the single best way to get on top of it. So it becomes like muscle memory, right? You do like five to 10 best ball drafts or $3 a pop to enter, which you'll get with our deposit $10 promo code with BDGE. And they're going to hit you with a bunch of deposit matches and bonuses and shit. And you can use those for the best ball drafts. And I promise once you do a bunch of them, it, it literally becomes muscle memory. So when you're on your draft with your friends, you're like, oh, this guy should not be available here. He's usually getting drafted way higher. That is the guy you should be targeting. And that is how you know you should be targeting. When we're in round six and seven, when we're at this turn, I've been very vocal that I think Dak and this Dallas Cowboys offense are in for a monster season. Now, if you took CeeDee Lamb like we did with our first pick, this is a must draft spot for Dak in the seventh round. The Dallas duo of Dak and CD following their week seven bye, right? They they went Tony Pollard for weeks one through seven. The week seven bye hit from weeks eight to the end of the regular season. Dak was the quarterback one in fantasy. And CeeDee Lamb was the wide receiver one in fantasy. So we're going to get our QB one here. All right. And listen, I get it. If you don't want to take a quarterback this early, that is fine. You could wait and you, you could draft the best flex player available based on our rankings. Also part of our draft guide. So what we're going to do here is take Dak, who has an ADP of 703 in our round six pick or Najee Harris at the 708 with our seventh pick. So we'll move on to our round eight, nine turn. And up to this point, we have almost a full roster, right? We have CeeDee Lamb as our wide receiver one. We've got Nico Collins as our two. We've got Devonta as our three. Dalton Kincaid as our tight end. We've got Pacheco as our running back one. Najee Harris as our running back two. And Dak as our quarterback. So I hate to sound like a broken record, but be, but because, again, we have no holes in our starting roster, we have a ton of flexibility. Uh, we have the starting roster filled out, which I don't think is a necessity up at this point. I'm not trying to make draft picks based on filling out my entire starting roster. We can kind of just go anywhere, right? We're just drafting the best bench players available. And it's okay to you know, take swings on high upside players. Like here, when we get to the 8-9 turn, Deontay Johnson's ADP is 809. Jackson Smith and Jigba's ADP is 901. Jalen Warren's is 903. Christian Watson's is 905. So I would take uh, a double dip of two of those guys. So let's say we took Deontay Johnson and Jackson Smith and Jigba. But again, you could take JSN. I wouldn't take Jalen Warren here if I took Najee Harris, but I like one or the other. You can go JSN and Christian Watson or something like that to really like back up your highest flex plays available. And once we get to round 10, I mean, we have our, our team for the most part. Now we're just ripping shots on our favorite sleepers, right? And we have all of our favorite sleepers listed in our draft guide as well. One thing I would maybe check on is like if your quarterback or tight end has a super early bye week. Some teams, I think, have a week four or five bye. If that's the case, I might think about taking uh and, and not like round 10 or 11 but maybe like round 13 14 15 where you're taking like random uh high upside like backup backup running backs i might look at the schedule of a quarterback and see like hey in that bye week that's really early let me pick him up 
let me pick a, a second guy up or something like that. For defenses and kickers, always use your last two picks on them, respectively, defense and kickers. Uh, some defenses to target in week one based on matchups. There, there's a rule of thumb that I tend to go by, and that is I always stream defenses if I play in leagues with defenses. But more importantly, you want a defense that is projected to win the game, so they're favored in week one, and they're at home. The bigger the spread, the better. The higher the over-under, the bigger the spread you want it to be. Because shootout uh, might seem bad because your defense lets up a lot of points, but at the same time, that means a lot of dropbacks. So we're talking about sacks, we're talking about strip sacks, interceptions, things like that. So you have Buffalo, minus 6.5 at home versus Arizona. You have Cincinnati, minus 9.5 at home versus New England. New Orleans is minus 4.5 at home versus Carolina. Seattle's minus five at home versus Denver. Tampa Bay is minus three and a half versus Washington at home. So those are uh, the streaming options I think would be the best targets that are reasonably priced. And you could probably get those in the second to last round of your drafts. Like you're obviously not going to get the Baltimore's and the San Francisco's there, but those would be the ones I would be targeting. And looking back on our draft, this is how the lineup played out, right? We've got Dak, CD, Nico Collins, Devonta Smith, Isaiah Pacheco, Najee Harris, Dalton Kincaid, Deontay Johnson, Jackson Smith, and Jigba. And then I threw Zeke in there because he was going to be my 10th round pick. But I'd feel that's a 12-team full PPR league. I'd feel fucking fantastic about this team. And here are two other potential lineups that you could have ended up with if you took this same strategy based off of ADP and just kind of played along with the same way that I was drafting. So you could look at your options. Maybe you like this one. Maybe you like this one. Maybe you like this one. I don't know. There's a little bit for everybody, which is also the case for our draft guide. Again, live right now. We've got rankings for PPR, half PPR, standard, super flex, one quarterback, draft strategy articles, must draft players, all fade lists. We've got our tiebreaker matrix, which is probably the coolest thing that we have announced this year. And it is like this tool that's going to allow you to make decisions really easily when you are on the clock with stats like offensive line rank for each player, offensive pace for each player. It's these quick little numbers that will get you over the hump of of which guy do I take between wide receiver 22 23 and 24 right there for you within our rankings all right go get it now underdog fantasy deposit ten dollars or more using code bdge and you'll get the draft guide access email to you absolutely free otherwise go cop it on bdge.co i uh, hope this video was helpful and uh we will be bike with five through eight and nine through twelve all right love y'all smoochies